had a chance to study your lesson. This is familiar territory. And so we should be able to get us a really good discussion going uh, on this lesson. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our Sunday School lesson. What's the title of our lesson today? Prophecy of Jesus' the birth. The prophecy of Jesus' birth. The prophecy of Jesus' birth. Where is it found? Um, Luke 1, 26 to 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. And you know, Luke chapter 1 had like 70 verses in it. This is a long chapter. And this lesson, it grabs right kind of in the center of, the, of that chapter to talk about the prophecy of Jesus' birth. Can I get someone to read for us um, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38 in its entirety, please? And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art that <laughs> hell, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he, reign, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee, Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed from her, the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we have the prophecy of Jesus' birth. And so let's just get right into it. Um, then we're going to take a retrospective look and then come back to our spot. Um, the title of our first line, outline is An Unexpected Appearance. An Unexpected Appearance. What do y'all think? What's the unexpected appearance? That angel. The angel. Yeah. So watch this. What did the angel do when he made this appearance? He had to comfort her first. He didn't want her to be so frightened that she was uh, not going to be able to hear what he had to tell her. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't common for folks to just see an angel. And if they did, it was probably going to be scary. Yes, indeed. So, this is verse 26 through 29. So watch this. It says, so in this unexpected appearance, it says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Why did it, it say in the sixth month? Six month of what? There you go. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. So Elizabeth was six months pregnant, yep. and because that is the reference of time, this is the, the uh, uh, Dr. Luke telling the story. Now the amazing thing about Dr. Luke is that he didn't walk with Jesus. No. So he was told the story, and then he told the story. Right. Second hand. Second hand, but under the inspiration of God. Okay. And he wanted to be very clear, mm -hmm. as hopefully doctors do. They want to make sure 
you understand what's going on. Right. Yeah. So he gave you the time frame. He says, now in the sixth month, mm -hmm. the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, but Joe, this is critical. It's a lot going on in verse number 26. Because watch this, Mr. Lowe. Yes, sir. Um, if you go back to the beginning of the book of Luke, and we won't do it right now, you'll find that Gabriel had made an appearance, an unexpected appearance, before. He had made an unexpected appearance to Zacharias, who was the husband of Elizabeth. Now, the amazing thing, and, and we ought to be excited about what's going on in verse number 26, because um, Gabriel appeared to Zacharias in the temple. Amen. Amen. Now, that makes sense. That's like God appearing to us, or we feel in the presence of God in the church. Right, right. That just makes sense. He talked to Zacharias in the temple while Zacharias was doing ministry. And Zechariah was doing ministry and he doubted, told him he needed a sign. He said, okay, I need you a sign. You ain't going to talk until that baby's born. You ain't going to say a word. How you like that sign? Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. So Zacharias saw Gabriel in the temple. But this right here ought to make us really excited because I don't know about Everybody, but I know some folks they've been in church their whole life. Amen. Oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the wrong crowd. <laughs> I need to say that to the 11 o'clock worship. Uh, come on, y'all been in church y'all whole life. Huh? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> Not everybody has been in church their whole lives. Not everybody was in the temple. And the fact that Gabriel now was sent not to the holy temple. But he was sent to a little city called Nazareth. Nazareth right. uh, John 1 46, the question was asked, is there any good thing to come out of Nazareth? Right. The reason this is significant, watch this, the city of Nazareth was way out in the country. And Nazareth was the place, if you caught a case and you was on the run, you hid in Nazareth. <laughs> Yeah. It was the place where you didn't want to be known. Right. It was kind of like going to New York City right now. Yes, sir. You can go to New York and be anything you want to be. Because <laughs> don't nobody really look for right. you in New York City. Right. Nazareth was this place like, I'm going so far out, ain't nobody going to come looking for me. Right. My past can't catch up with me in Nazareth. Oh, my and the Bible says in the six months, that the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. That's real important. Yeah. It went way out. Now, some of us, we might not have been in church, but it was easy for God to find us. <laughs> the rest of us, Brother Rodney, he had, you remember that song? He'll reach way down and pick you up. If you have to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. See, for some of us, he had to reach way out. Way into the muck of the to even find us. Like, I ain't trying to be all up in that right there. So, here's Gabriel having been sent from God, and he was sent to an unusual place. And then he found something there. He says that he was sent to Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse, to a man whose name was Joseph. Um, I'm going to say more about this in the little sermon, so I'm not going to get a whole little sermon away. But um, this word espoused for our conversation today, you'll hear it called betrothed, but just to say engaged. That's, that's how we'll understand it. He was engaged, but their engagement was a little different than ours because once you got engaged, you was like legally bound and engaged. And in order to break the engagement, you had to get a divorce. That's a serious thing. It was a legal process you had to go through. Like, once I ask you to marry me, you say, yeah, you can't just get away from me unless we go to the court system. Okay. You can't break it off that easy. You had to get divorced. 
during the engagement? You had to right. actually issue a writing of divorcement right. to break the espousal or wow. the engagement. Wow. wow. You can't like, we done. No, like, I don't want to see you no right, more. Right, right. Uh, break them. No, nah, you ain't like, she be like, uh uh. No, you're not. No, uh uh. I got papers on you, boy. I got some papers. You ain't going too far. So that's the reason, even way back then, it was wise to choose wise. Don't just choose anybody. Just because she got them bumps don't mean that. You better get the right one the first time. <laughs> To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin was named Mary. It was very specific. Like, man, I went that God sent Gabriel out to this little country town called Nazareth to find one virgin. I don't want all the virgins. I want one. I want the one who is engaged to Joseph. And I want the one who is named Mary. Now, if there's another Joseph somewhere, her name is, is Sue. I don't want that one. Right, right. I want the one who is engaged to Joseph, who is of the house of David, yes, sir. and her name is Mary. Very specific. Like, it is extremely specific. Don't you ever believe that God will mess around and give your blessing to somebody else. No, you don't make the what God has for you is for you. He'll find you wherever you are. And give it to you. Yeah. Are you hearing me? I hear you. Amen. Verse number 28, it says, And the angel came into unto her and said something most amazing. He said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Like, Mary like tripping now. Mm -hmm. She's like, first of all, I'm looking at an angel. Right. Like, you don't just wake up and see angels. Oh, yeah. Then they're gonna start talking to me. And he'll say he gonna say something. He's like, I salute you. Hail. Thou art highly favored of God. Well, he really got the rubber stamp. <laughs> <laughs> Says, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with you. Yes, sir. Watch this. Blessed art thou among women. Now, this young girl was probably no more than about 14, 15 <coughs> years old. Probably in her mind, I'm just regular. Ain't nothing real special about me. I'm just trying to do, be my best me, trying to be my blessed me. I ain't trying to have no drama in my life. I just want to do what I'm supposed to do, when I'm supposed to do it, where I'm supposed to do it, how I'm supposed to do it. Yes, sir. And I, that should be what everybody do. So ain't nothing special about me. You know, I'm just a plain Jane little girl just walking around loving my God and he's loving on me. But ain't that what everybody do? Yeah. I ain't thinking I'm no more than nobody else. I'm just about my business. Come on, yeah. Um, all of a sudden, an uh, angel show up. Says, I salute you. You are highly favored of God. You have something going on that you don't deserve, and it's only by God's grace that He gives it to you. You're highly favored. Yeah. Everybody else ain't got going on what you got going on. You're highly favored. He says, Now, God is with you, and you are blessed among women. There's a lot of blessed women, but you are the blessed of the blessed. She definitely living her blessed life. Verse number 29 says that when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Like, what did I do? I would imagine this is just my body is throwing on it, uh, Sister Alexis. I would imagine she probably, if she was in today's time, she'd be like, are you trying to pump me? What's going on? It's like there's a hidden camera somewhere. What did I do? All the thing I've been doing is just me. How many have ever been really blessed of the Lord and in your heart of hearts you felt like you what you didn't deserve? Oh, many times. Mm. God has been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And if we're real honest, He's been better to us than we deserve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yet, even though we may not feel like we deserve it. He didn't take the blessing away. Thank 
Amen. It's like, I done put it on you. It's yours. Work with it until you get used to it. And by the time you get used to that one, I got another one for you. Lord have mercy. This is an unexpected appearance. Anybody else want to grab anything else in there? Everybody else cool? Did that cover it pretty good? Yeah. All right. Outline number two. What's the title? Unexpected announcement. Mm. An unexpected announcement. It's verse number 30 through 33. Verse number 30 says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, he already told them, like, you highly favored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now he said again, girl, you don't know. <laughs> you have found favor yeah. with God. You found it. You didn't deserve it. You may not even been looking for it, but you found it. Right. You done run up on favor. Mm -hmm. Watch this. He said, fear not. Now, I think all of us can work with that. Because yeah. an angel is sitting there talking to him. Right. They don't describe how the angel looked, but whatever for whatever reason, most times in the in the Bible when you see an angel, people get scared. Oh yeah, yes sir. So it must have been an awesome being, but we don't know exactly how the angel looked. Then it says, verse number thirty-one. It says, "And behold, here's the announcement: Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name." Jesus. Amen. Um, that would have been more than enough right there. You do remember in verse number 26 or 27, one of them, they said she was a virgin, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the angel said, I'm looking for that virgin yeah. in Nazareth who is engaged to Joseph, whose name is Mary. Then he says, you are going to bring forth a son. Now she knows that she ain't had intimacy with a man. She knows that she is not currently pregnant. And an angel is talking to her. This is an amazing announcement. But Brother Red, I want to show us something. This ain't the first time that announcement has been made. This is the latest installment of this announcement. That's the reason there is nobody like Jesus. There is literally no one like him because I want to show you exactly how many times scripturally this announcement has been made. Over the course of thousands of years and Mary who was obviously aware of scripture now knows that the scripture is being about to be fulfilled in her. Watch this. <clears throat> Let's take a little scriptural uh, journey here. Let's go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. This is the first time this announcement was made. Now watch this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and her seed. Yep. It shall bruise thy head, mm -hmm. and thou shalt bruise his head. Mm -hmm. This is God talking. He said, now seed is going to come from a woman. Now y'all do know that a seed come from a man. Yep. Lord have mercy. <laughs> He says, a seed going to come from you. My God. And this baby is going to be born by you. And the enemy is going to bruise his head. He's going to bruise the enemy's head, but he's going to bruise, the enemy is going to bruise his heel. And that obviously happened on Calvary. That's why they put nails in his feet. That was the enemy bruising his heel. All right. Watch this. Genesis chapter chapter 4 verse 4, 15. I'm sorry. Genesis chapter 4 verse 15. Watch this. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. 
She wrote it. This king went but. out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nob on the east of Eden. Am I reading that? Is it 18 that you are? Mm -hmm. Let's pass that one. Go to uh, Genesis chapter 9, verse 27. I'll come back to that one. I put, I put the wrong scripture. May God enlarge Jacob, is that right? Mm -hmm. And may he, dwell, may he dwell in the tents of Shun. And may Canaan be his servant. And Noah lived <coughs> for 350 years. Am I right, son? Yeah. I'm tearing, <coughs> fault. I'm tearing all these scriptures up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't want that one either. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. This will pick it up. No, go ahead. You good. Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. Mm -hmm. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So watch this. So what we thought we was giving you in verse number, in chapter number 4, that uh, there was a line that came through the line of Seth, which is why Jesus had to come because Cain had killed Abel. Right. And now so Abel is dead and Cain is on the run. Mm -hmm. And so Seth was the only one that the promise could come through. All right, all right. What we were attempting to do in verse in chapter number 19, uh, number nine, then from Seth, from Seth lineage, then we get to Shem. Yep. Shem was one of the sons of uh, no, no. of Noah. That's what we were attempting to do. And then when you get down to chapter 12, this is Abraham. He's saying that all the families on the earth are going to be blessed by my descendant. Mm -hmm. There's only one person in the descendant of Abraham by which everybody was blessed. That's Jesus and that's Jesus. Amen. Watch this. Uh, try Genesis 21 and 12. Let's see if that one works. <laughs> hey God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bond woman. All that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken to her voice, for in Isaac shall they, thy seed be called. Yep. So now Isaac, through Isaac, the seed is rolling. Um, let's try Genesis 25 and 23. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Mm -hmm. Two people shall be separated from your body. Mm -hmm. One people shall be stronger than the other, mm -hmm. and the older shall serve the younger. And now you get Jacob coming on the scene. Yeah. And let's try Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, mm -hmm. nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Mm -hmm. So Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'm going to go back and, and, and uh, read verse 9 too. It says, Judah is a lion's whelp. Mm -hmm. From the prey, my from yeah, from the prey, my son, thou art grown, gone up. The, he stooped down, he couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? And then the scepter shall not depart. When you talk about the scepter not departing, it's actually talking about the king who is going to sit on the throne out of the tribe of Judah forever. And his name is Lord and mercy. Y'all have figured it out. Now watch this. Pastor, what is Judah's wealth? What is the wealth? I don't want to blink on that. I have to get back to you on that one. Because I don't know right now. Well, a lion's whelp is, is a baby. Yes, a, that's a baby lion's cry. But what specifically that means, I have to get back to you on that one. So watch this. Now, let's look at the specific announcement. Because you just heard in Luke chapter 1, verse 31, that there was an announcement that Mary was going to have a baby. A virgin going to have a baby. 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 Have have a baby. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 watch this now watch how specific this announcement is even well before the angel came to Mary 
Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Mm. Behold, a virgin shall conceive mm -hmm. and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Watch this. So, it started back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where God made the announcement that a woman was going to have a seed. A baby was going to be born that was going to bruise the head of the enemy. And the enemy was going to bruise his heel. That baby had to come through the line of Seth. Had to come through Shem. It had to go through the tribe of Judah. It had to be, it had to be from Abraham's seed. It had to be uh, out of Isaac and out of Jacob. And then out of the tribe of Judah. And then Isaiah says, there's going to be a baby born to a virgin. And they're going to call his name Emmanuel. Now, let me just talk about that real quick. His name being Emmanuel speaks more to his title than his name. Emmanuel means, interpreted, God with us. Meaning the Messiah has come. That's more of his title than his name. So the scripture is not lying to you when it says they're going to name him Emmanuel. They're going to name him what his title is, his title is God with us or Messiah. That's also interpreted Emmanuel. All right? Isaiah 9, 6. Talking about announcements. For unto us, unto us a child is born. Mm -hmm. Unto us a son is given. A son is given. And the government shall mm -hmm. be upon his shoulder. Yep. And his name shall be called Wonderful. It's wonderful. Counselor. Mm -hmm. The mighty God. He's the mighty God. The everlasting, the everlasting Father, Father. The Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Oh, yes. Lord have mercy. They're talking about an announcement. Now, keep in mind, this is the prophet Isaiah talking. He is predicting the birth of Jesus over 700 years before Jesus showed up on the scene. All right. Mm. Mm. That's a prophecy. Watch this. This ain't the first time that announcement has been made. Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. Micah, one of them books you don't never read. <laughs> <laughs> one of you might have to look in your table of contents. <laughs> Where are you, Micah? But right after you, the book of Jonah. Oh, the coming Messiah, but you, Bethlehem, I don't know what that word is. Through you are little, though you are little among thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. What it's saying is, out of the most unlikely place, this little yeah. place called Bethlehem. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Out of this little place. You are little among all these thousands of Judah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is to be the ruler of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the announcement Amen. that a baby is coming. Amen. Now watch this. We come from Genesis over to the book of Micah. Mm -hmm. Micah 5 2. Watch this. <laughs> As you move out of the Old Testament, you move through Malachi, mm -hmm. then you have a period of silence. 400 years where God did not speak to his people. Wow. He ain't said a word. God, he done decided, I've already said everything needs need to be said. The intertestimonial period ain't no God ain't saying nothing. Transition. Then watch this. Then he shows up in the book of Luke, chapter one, yeah. and he sends his angel Gabriel to a virgin named Mary, and he makes the same announcement that God made in Genesis. He says, you're going to be 
a spot, and you're going to be uh, conceiving your womb, and you're going to get pregnant. And you're going to bring forth a son, and you're going to call his name Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now, the amazing thing, Sister Charlotte, is this. One, she's still a virgin. Two, it was not her responsibility, nor it was, her, was it her right to name a son. That's cultural. It was the daddy's job. It was the daddy who got the opportunity to name the son. Because if you go back up into Luke, further into Luke chapter 1, you will find where when uh, John was born, the angel told Zacharias, name him John. You will find in scripture when John was born, the folks around him because John couldn't talk. Right. They said, you're going to name him Zacharias, right? And Zechariah was like, uh uh-huh. And they gave him something to write on, and he wrote the name John. Like, this boy ain't Zechariah Jr. He ain't Z.R. <laughs> he is not Zach Jr. No, he's not getting that title. He is John. So it was the father who had the authority and the right to name him. But the angel says, you gonna name him. Jesus. The amazing thing is the scripture don't violate order though, because what you will find in the book of Matthew, when the angel of God talked to Joseph, he told Joseph, he said, what is in her is of the Holy Ghost. She's going to bring forth a son, and you going to name him Jesus. Clear <laughs> structure. The Old Testament scripture says, now if you look at it, it says in Isaiah 7, 14, it says that they shall name him Emmanuel, mm-hmm. which meant both of them had to say it. Wow. Wow. She, out of obedience, Joseph put his father, father authority to it, or his male authority to it, yes, even though he wasn't the official daddy. Mm-hmm. It says they shall call him Emmanuel. It's a pretty good little scripture reading. (laughs) So watch this. We have this announcement. It says, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. 32, And he shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord shall give him Given to him the throne of David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of the kingdom there shall be no end. Um, there has never been a birth on the face of this earth like Jesus. Never. You can think back to when your baby or your grandbabies was born. Tell me, honestly, don't lie to me. Tell me honestly, (laughs) before all that happened, before you slept with whoever you slept with, (laughs) did the angel come? I ain't seen no angel. I just saw that woman. (laughs) Did the angel come? Watch this. Now, listen to my question carefully. Did the angel come? And tell you that one, she was gonna, she or he, or whatever, gonna get, she, or he, she was gonna get pregnant. <laughs> tell you what the sex of the babies, what the baby was. Tell you what the baby's purpose was, and name the baby. Now, if you if you didn't get all of them, I don't even need to hear from you. The angel came ahead of time. The angel told you she gonna get pregnant. Told you it's gonna be a boy. Told you what to name the boy, and told you what the purpose of the boy was. No, no way. 
I struck out on every count. I know we got some folks in the house that had them dreams about fishes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I dreamt about some fish. And next thing I know, somebody in the family prayed. Some of you had them dreams or options or premonition. I'm pregnant and I ain't been to the doctor yet. Some of you had them premonitions. I think this is going to be a girl. This is going to be a boy. Even if the older folks tried to look at how you carry them. Right. You carry them high. This one, you carry them low. Yeah, carry them low as a boy. Carry them low as a boy. Carry them high. Now, this is what's funny. Let me tell you this real quick. I don't want to get too far off subject. I work with, I have a co-worker in Pennsylvania. The most amazing thing I've ever seen. Uh, he and his wife was pregnant with their third child. And they had gone and got the ultrasound. And they uh, told us, like, it's a boy. They went and they got blue everything. Blue, 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 blue. <laughs> Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful girl. Yeah. Oh, beautiful girl. Yeah. Wow. And before the baby came home, he had to take off work. They go paint that room pink and change out the. I mean, it was crazy. Yes, sir. Um, what you said with really, uh, the rest of my heart. Um, I about my wife years ago when I was 17 before my grandmother passed. And when I woke up, before she passed, you prayed in faith. I did not know uh, five, ten years later, I did not know her in the church, in the church ever. It's a coincidence. And, but in the dream was not only my wife, but China. I was wondering who this person was, and it was right behind a rose bush where my grandmother planted. And this was a dream. And the dream, I didn't know what to do with the dream, so my grandma told me, why don't we do this? Why don't we touch the tree and we pray over this? So that way, if this other Lord, it'll happen. I just want to add that. Awesome. Awesome. All right, man. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any, anybody else want to grab any of that? Yes, ma'am. That's so true because uh, Tanja said uh, Tyrese was supposed to be, they did ultrasound, supposed to be a girl. So they had a shower for her at the state with all these girl Tell clothes. Tell Came out a boy and she was so disappointed. Tell him. Tell him. <laughs> yep. They had to take all that stuff back. Well, you've been looking at a picture sometimes they don't know. <laughs> it, it has happened. It has absolutely happened. Yeah. Anybody else want to grab some of uh, outline number two? I just make an announcement. <laughs> Outline number three then, unexpected explanation. Verse number 34, it says, Then Mary, then said Mary unto the angels, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Like, okay, I understand some things, but I also understand some things. I ain't right. been with nobody. Right. Right. And the angel answered, now watch this. This is powerful here. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. What has happened then here, my brothers and my sisters? God has done something again, but he did it differently. In verse number 35, we actually see the Trinity. We see God himself, the Father. It says, uh, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. We see God, uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And we see God the Son, because it says the Son of God. Watch this. And they got together to do a creation of something that had never happened. The last time they got together to do a creation of something happened that had never happened, it was in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created.
created the heaven and the earth. We find God and God the Father and God the Son in verse number one. Right. Because you see, obviously, uh, Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God. Right. But we know scripture now. John 10 and 30 says, this is Jesus talking. He says, I and my Father, we're one. Yes, so we can put Jesus and God in verse number one of Genesis one. And then in verse number two of Genesis, it says, and the Spirit moved upon the face of the, of the water. Watch this. So now we got God the Father, got the Son, got the Holy Spirit to actually to produce creation, create something that had never been. To bring order out of disorder. To bring light out of darkness. To do something that no one else could have done. So now in Luke chapter 1 verse 35, we see the Trinity that showed up again. And rather than trying to create a world because the last time it created a world that was prepared for man. This time it created a God that was prepared for the world. There's a term in some theological studying for verse number 35, Brother Ronnie, and it's actually called the creation of God. What happened here is actually, this is why we shouldn't worship Mary. Because what happened to Mary actually happened to every last one of us at the point of salvation. This is what happened. The Holy Spirit came into us and overshadowed us and actually deposited Jesus into our hearts. We then became 100% 100% human, but we had 100% God in us. And he created something in us that was not there before. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. How you get new? I was created new. I didn't become new. I was created new. <coughs> Because what he did in me is the same thing he did in Mary, which was the same thing that he did for the world. All right. Lord have mercy. He says, what, 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 what we believe is this. We believe that every single time someone gives their life to Christ, they are actually impregnated yes, with God. Yes, <laughs> My God. Now watch this. It says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. It's going to hover mm -hmm. over exactly like he did in verse number two of Genesis. Amen. And he's waiting for instruction. Mm -hmm. And when our faith kicks in, mm -hmm. for you know that we're saved by grace through faith. Yeah. When our faith kicks in, then the Holy Spirit moves and starts creating. Mm -hmm. The first thing he created was light. light. Oh and that's the first thing that happens in us. We are, trans we are actually transported from darkness into, light. into the marvelous light. Mm -hmm. We are spiritually repositioned so that we are no more in darkness even though we may not be able to see at that time. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is open your eyes. Uh, you heard me tell the story, and I got someone here who can verify it for me. When I came out of this little procedure back in September, I was in the recovery room, and they tell me I'm in there talking and quoting scripture and all that. Got my eyes closed. I'm asking, is uh, this one here and that one here? All I got to do is open my eyes. <laughs> Laying up in the bed, not me just getting it in, talking and preaching with my eyes closed. As a matter of fact, I remember uh, Minister Spicer, she had been standing on the right side of the bed, and uh, I remember touching her hand. And then I'm, still, I'm doing my thing, but I remember, okay, I need to touch her hand one more time because I'm about making this point. I need a hand to grab. And I'm reaching, and she ain't there. <laughs> If I had simply opened my eyes, I probably would have figured out I think she had moved to the other side of the room. <laughs> it's crazy. 
Some of us are in the light and won't open our eyes. He has positioned us into light and we still are so used to darkness we won't open our eyes. Lord have mercy Jesus. Verse number 36 and behold thy cousin Elizabeth she had also conceived a son in her old age. It is amazing how two people can be going through the same thing and have a whole different look. Oh yeah. yeah. You had an older woman who was barren and she became pregnant and it took away her reproach. Yeah. You had a young girl who was actually a virgin and she was pregnant and it was about to bring shame. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Both of them are actually pregnant. Mm -hmm. Both of them have God's gift in them. But they'll look that very differently. Can I hurry up and tell society to stop judging mothers by what's going on in their body? Listen, ain't no such thing as a bastard child. There's no such thing as an illegitimate child. God sends every single child into this world on assignment. It doesn't matter what is the situation, how the baby got here. It doesn't matter what's wrong in our minds with the baby. That baby is on assignment. And even if that baby is still born, even if that baby never comes into this world, it actually still has a purpose. I saw a child, I was at a home going of a child that was actually uh, miscarried. It was miscarried very late in the pregnancy. Yeah. And they, they had a full service for this child. And it was one of the most powerful services I had ever seen. It was the grandchild of my pastor. My dear brother, Christopher Moore Sr., him and his wife, Danielle, they lost their baby. Her body actually physically fought and killed her baby. At about seven and a half, eight months into the pregnancy. There was something going on that they didn't know, and that baby died, and they had a full service. And for the first time, I saw my pastor get up and preach a whole sermon and don't never give a title. Mm. He said, I ain't got no title. I don't know what the title is. And that, by far, is the best sermon I ever heard him preach. Oh, that baby brought us together. Yeah. Though the baby never made it on this side of life. The baby still fulfilled its purpose. It created a bond between his mother, its mother and its father that is unmatchable in many cases. And now they are pregnant again. Yes, sir. And she's about to deliver in a few months. Yes, sir. I saw her Sunday and that bump is way out there. Right. Sweet Lord Jesus. She is under the doctor's care at Bronson Hospital. Yes, they are watching her intently. They use her as a case study because they had never seen anything like it. But they intend for that to never happen again. There is something going on, and I know we're in Albion, but there's something going on in the city of Kalamazoo when it comes down to babies, because that city has such a high infancy rate. It is amazing that it is almost common that babies don't actually live to be born in the city of Kalamazoo. I'm so thankful that my baby was born in Pennsylvania, so we came here with some babies. I'm thankful about that. I'm thankful about that. But what I do know is that it can happen because what you may not know is that we're supposed to have three. There was Jamila, there was Jeffrey, and then there was another one, but we lost one in 2004. But I'm so glad to know this, that even though that baby did not make it into this world, that baby still served the purpose. Because this is what I know, Joe. My baby that didn't arrive on this side of heaven, it, he, he or she served a purpose because it gives me a reason to want to go to heaven to see my baby. I'm not talking to that baby in that pregnancy was not in vain because when I see Jesus, I'm also going to be looking for my baby. All I know is all he did or she did was come just for a brief moment be pulled back off of assignment because the assignment was fulfilled. Wow. And all of them, the baby is telling me in the spirit, it's like, Daddy, come see me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Daddy, live your life where we'll see each other again. Yeah. Daddy, live your life where we don't never have to be separated right. again. Right. That's the reason we don't worry as much as you might think we do about babies going back to heaven. Amen. As a matter of fact, it's an act of mercy. Amen. Yeah. Sweet Amen. Lord Amen. Jesus. Yeah. Let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up real quick. Yes, sir. Um, it says, uh, Elizabeth is pregnant in her old age, in the sixth month, and she was barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. My goodness. 
if nobody hears nothing else that I say today, because this is internalizing with me, with God, nothing, nothing Come on, God. shall be impossible. Come on, God. If it's impossible, it's just right for God. There's a saying that goes, man's extremities is God's opportunity. When it get too much for us, it's just right for him. He has set up some impossible situations so that when he moves in it, you can't never take the credit. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. All those impossible financial situations. With God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. The angel didn't move until she agreed with him. Woo! Maybe we got some angels that have parked out waiting for us to agree with what God has told us about our sins. Like I done told you, I'm sitting right here until you agree. And if you stop agreeing, you don't talk to me, you just give up on me, my angel is sitting right there just looking at it like, like, when you going to agree? I told you that in 1975, when you going to agree? I told you again in 1986 when you're going to agree. Come on, I told come you on. again in 1998 when you're going to agree. Come on, man. I told you again in 2007 when you're going to agree. Yeah. Through the financial crisis of 2008, I told you if you just still had not agree. I'd let you see a, a black president be elected and you still had not agree that I could do anything. I moved by my power and my might and I done bless you over and over and again and you keep complaining about what I didn't do when you're going to agree. And because you ain't agreeing, I'm just going to sit here and ask you when you're going to agree. I have been sent by the Lord to tell you that you are blessed and highly favored when you're going to agree. You keep getting get depressed and I want you to be joyous in the Lord when you're going to agree. Everything ain't so bad in your life when you're going to agree. I woke you up this morning. I tapped you on the shoulder when you're going to agree. You keep on talking about what will happen to you when you're going to agree. Yes, we don't brag on the God who is blessed you. We don't brag on the God who woke you up this morning. We don't brag on the God who put food on your table. We got a good bless to the Lord for blessing you when you should have been blessed. We don't bless and agree with you when you want to kill you from getting that accident that took you over the dangerous highways and byways that put a uh, family beside you and when your family rejected you, gave you another family yes, on that church. When you want to agree with me, I am blessed and you are blessed. I'm trying I'm done. That's it. That's it. Oh, Question, comments, concerns. Everybody cool? Yeah, man. This bless, this help. Oh, yeah. More than I ever saw that. Woo! Ah. Well, if you think the listeners got some niggas in it, stick around for the sermon. Amen. You're going to get a couple of things that I believe will bless your heart. Now, if I fail at it, then, you know, I we say, I try. Uh, let's get ready to uh, be dismissed. Go down to breakfast. Right. Go ahead and stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for showing us the announcement, the unexpected appearance of Gabriel, unexpected announcement, the unexpected yeah. explanation. But as important as anything, the immediate response of Mary. Yeah. Allow us. To have an immediate response. Yeah. Yeah. To know that when we obey you quick, mm-hmm. you will bless us quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We thank you, Lord, for this class. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you for you getting the glory. Thank you. you being completely magnified. Yeah. Yeah. And the devil now mm-hmm. is completely horrified. Yes, sir. We thank you right now you, that we are better even now than we were when we came in the door. We also thank you for the food that has been prepared for the nourishing our bodies. We thank you that it brings forth not only good fellowship, but it brings forth strength and comfort. And that it will keep us at least 11 o'clock where we can dine on some spiritual food. And we can lift up the name of Jesus. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. It's in Jesus' matchless name we do pray.